Welcome back to Real Talk with Delphine. I'm Distinctive Delphine, your real estate expert for residential and investment, and today I'm talking photography. I'm really excited to talk to Sam from Growth Gallery about astrophotography and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Real Talk with Delphine. Today I'm really excited to introduce another one of our Montrose Living um, partner, and that is Sam Growth with Growth Photography. So Sam, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, Delphine? I'm good, thank you. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm really fascinated by the things that you do for a living, and I'd love to learn more about who you are and what you do. Tell me more. Sure. So first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, like as you can see in the middle here, we have like one of my uh, telescope or astrophotography setups. So this one would take uh, it could take images of some of the uh, distant galaxies mm -hmm. that are relatively close to us, even though they're far away. And uh, this uh, device here is called a star tracker. And so we know that we are rotating on Earth here, right? And so. Basically, when you're trying to take a long exposure image for an imi a minute or multiple minutes of the night sky, you want the uh, camera to be pointed in the same location for the entire time. And so basically what the tracker does is it rotates opposite the Earth's rotation so that the camera will stay pointed in the same spot. Oh, that is so cool. So I think once we get into astronomy and astrophotography, it becomes a passion pretty quickly. Um, so tell me, I think you help people take mm. those photos and really teach people how to do so. So you don't just deliver images, but you also teach. Is that right? Yeah, correct. So uh, right now, I've so until now, right, I've been focusing on just taking images and making prints of them, maybe to hang in my house or sell to people who I know who are interested in it. But like, I'd like to expand beyond that now. And so uh, I'm taking my images to the next level and I'm making them available as prints. And also I want to be able to teach other people how to take images like what I have so that people can enjoy the same passion that I have. And to put it in a little bit of a perspective for you guys to see what Sam actually does, why don't we show a, few, a little bit of your work and see, um, because I didn't know you could take photo photo photographs like this, so detailed and beautiful. I mean, if you look at this, to me, it's out of a movie, right? It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And so what does it take to be able to produce something like this? And furthermore, if we're interested in having this in our home, what do we do? So basically uh, with uh, this photo here, right, this was actually a relatively uh, simple photo to take. <laughs> that might not seem like it from uh, like the looks of it. It's gorgeous. But it's a, this is actually a single exposure image that I took uh, with a tripod. I did not even use a star tracker for uh, the specific one. Wow. And so uh, when you have the right equipment and the right uh, conditions with the weather and uh, the uh, clouds, smoke, whatever else that might get in your way, right, you can get some pretty awesome results. And where is that? So this is actually south of Ure, uh, down by uh, a place called Crystal Lake. And so you see Red Mountain in uh, the image here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, for the few months of the year, probably I would say really early in the morning at like 4 a.m., probably in February or March, you could see something similar to this. And then as you get into like June, it becomes earlier in the evening in July. And that by this time of year, this view is not even visible anymore. So there's wow. a limited time to even see this. Yeah, so you really have to know what you're doing, when to be there, how to, you know, what material to use and mm -hmm. how to shoot, right? Correct. Very specific. Exactly. So how did you get into photography? So basically how I got into photography was uh, many years ago, right, when I got like my first smartphone, I started taking pictures with it, right? But obviously the results are very limited. But even so, I got some really great pictures that I have hanging on the wall in my house till this day, actually, with my phone. Nice. And so uh, back in uh, 2020, when COVID happened, I had a lot of free time. And so I was like, all right, let's see, what can I learn about photography that I don't know? And so I, uh, another interesting hang happened in 2020. There was this comment called uh, Neo Eyes that came. It was an uh, extremely bright comment. And it was unexpected. We, we didn't know it was going to be there in the sky, but it showed up and I saw all these awesome photographs online and I was like, I wonder if I could try to get a photo like this. 
So obviously, being new to astrophotography at that point, I, I really didn't know how to set up my equipment. I didn't know how to uh, go through the full process, to do the planning, make sure everything was lined up so that I could get a good image. So I got some like primitive images, I guess you could say, of the comet. But it was really kind of the gateway for me into astrophotography. If you go to my website, I have a few images up there that you and can see. What is your website? So my website is uh, Growth Galleries, G-R-O-T-H Galleries.com. Very nice. And you're actually wearing one of your photos, is that right? Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a shot that I took of uh, the night sky. So the Milky Way, you can't really see it on my shirt, but there's a Milky Way in the middle of this. And so this is what's called Star Trails. So I used this uh, star tracker here and I put my uh, camera on there. And instead of tracking with the Earth, I tracked at a speed of 12 times the speed of the Earth's rotation. And so that it could make the star trails very quickly so I didn't have to wait for like a few hours to get the shot. So this might be like, I don't know, maybe two to four minute image that like tracks through the, the 12 times that amount of time uh, in actual motion. Wow. So it was kind of cool. That is really cool. So is that why now you want to take it a step further? So you've printed your images, mm -hmm. you have fantastic images, um, and you're now kind of putting yourself out there that you'd like to help people get to what you've learned, I guess, and, and really show them how to take photos. Is it because when you started, you didn't know how and, and you feel like it's not really out there and you'd love to show mm -hmm. people how great this is or like, what's the goal? Yeah, so there's a, there's a few goals there, right? So first of all, right, this is the passion of mine, right? And so I personally believe that uh, God created all the stars and we can see uh, God's glory in this creation. So showing that is one of the purposes. And the other purpose, right, is to share like uh, the beauty with other people, right? And so mm -hmm. if I can get them to capture images uh, that, that they can get of the sky itself and they can see it and appreciate it, right? Like, uh, I mean, it creates a community as well, right? Like online if you go and you look on youtube or any like social media right you can find people who create amazing pictures of the moon or the milky way or distant galaxies depending on what their their areas of interest are and their level of their equipment mm -hmm. and i think it's just really cool to be part of that community i love that so the intent is really to share with the community mm -hmm. and to be able to share that passion of exactly. yours so everybody can see why it's so mm -hmm. amazing you brought another photo too yeah, today yeah. that I'd love to share. So yeah, this one is of the moon. So actually, uh, like I have... Um, this I'm, looks unreal. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, actually taken from like the street right by my house. So I was going for my evening walk and I saw that the moon was rising and it was going to be right over the mountain. So I was not close to my house. So I literally ran instead of walked <laughs> back to my house, grabbed my equipment and set it up. And then uh, I was uh, from the, well, this is like literally from the road. Like I had people driving by, stopping by saying, what are you doing? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that great. is beautiful yeah. though. It's unreal. The purples <laughs> yeah. and the colors of this photo. It's just very, very beautiful. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, like you said though, it's, it kind of speaks to us of the majestic side mm -hmm. of nature. Yeah. Like, to me, this is so beautiful and, mm -hmm. and majestic. It's really gorgeous. So I can see why you would want to share that passion. That's really cool. So where can we find your art? I know we can find it on your website, but are you also trying to maybe get into galleries? Tell me more about that. Yeah. So. For right now, my art is primarily available on my website and you can view it there or you can come be friends with me and get to know me and come visit my house and see it. No, I mean, but uh, yeah, so the goal is eventually to share it with more people. So uh, any galleries uh, that are available, I'm trying to get into those to put my art there. And so mostly I'm starting out with Montrose area here. So mm -hmm. I'm working on several opportunities and we'll see where uh, those lead. So hopefully coming soon, you can come to a gallery in Montrose and see it. Fantastic. Well, and do your thing, Montrose. We know that as we share things online, um, really share Sam's art here and spread the word. It's something that when you're passionate about something, you can really do fantastic things. So I think it's so important to be part of the community and mm -hmm. add value to the community. And with you sharing these items and be, being willing to share your passion with others, it's crucial to the mm -hmm. growth of our community. Mm -hmm. So how do we get a hold of you? We know the website. But can we give you a call? Tell me if people are passionate about photography and want to learn more from you, how can they get a hold of you? 
Yeah, so the best way to get a hold of me is uh, still my website, right? So uh, growthgalleries.com. So there are multiple ways to contact me there. So I have a uh, education form on there where you can uh, put your information. And then if you want to learn from me, I actually have a few questions for you to answer before yeah, I would work with you. And I want to make sure I'm hiring uh, or we're working with the best uh, clients who like are actually interested in learning and going, taking their art to the next level, right? And so that like my goal is to, for people to come with me with a passion so that they can actually improve. And making sure it's the right fit. That's why correct. you have that form. Yes, correct, okay, yes. Because no, primarily I want to teach the landscape photography. And like, I mean, I've taken pictures of people, but that's for another area of things, but that's really not my area yeah. of interest. And we have some fantastic photographers in town who do that. So why mm -hmm. not just specialize in something different? Correct. And so we are lucky here that we live right by the Black mm -hmm. Canyon. Mm -hmm. And I think you've had opportunities there too. Tell me how lucky we are. If, if we look at the astronomy and astrophotography, how do you, would you categorize this area? Isn't that kind of heaven for you to be able to take those photos around here? I mean, I know you have some in Utah as mm -hmm. well, but like uh, driving distance to around here, I think we have many opportunities. Walk me through this. Like what's a day in the life of Sam when you go out for pictures? Yeah, so uh, my schedule might actually be a little bit different than a lot of people's schedule, right? So uh, the night photos right, are taken like obviously oftentimes after midnight or like early in the morning. So like if I pick a spot, let's say I want to go down either like my favorite spot so far, like the San Juans and then obviously Black Canyon. So Black Canyon is really a great spot in the, the spring. Actually, there's another local photographer. His name is uh, Vince Farnsworth, who has done some great panoramas of like the sky over the canyon. Mm -hmm. And so I've I've done that a couple of times. I got one pretty good result. <laughs> I was like, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it, that's a really challenging shot to take. And uh, oh, is it? yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. So this, I didn't actually get time this year to take it, but I'm hoping like next spring to get out there and uh, take some more panoramas of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like going down, like, so if I was to go through a, a single day of shooting, right? So I would, uh, I probably sleep later than most people, right, first. So that's how my day starts. And then I go through my normal activities. I eat breakfast. I make sure I'm posting on my social media because I'm trying to grow that. And then I make sure I work out and do any other tours I need to do. And then, like, uh, but I plan what I'm going to go shoot, right? So planning is actually a really key part of uh, photography. A lot of people miss that. They're like, okay, I'm just going to go visit this main attraction and like, I'm going to take a picture. And for, especially for astrophotography, that doesn't necessarily work out too well because mm -hmm. then maybe the moon isn't where you want it to be, or maybe the Milky Way is misaligned or the composition is just not exactly what it could be. And so you plan, okay, on this day, the Milky Way will be, will be aligned with this mountain at this time. And so there is uh, some apps that can help you out with that. And I, c I can help you to learn those things uh, if you are interested. And then, so I would do all this planning ahead of time and then I would travel to my destination, right? So obviously I have to tr plan in travel time. I have to make sure I'm checking the weather. I'm checking the smoke layers in the sky. You have to check uh, humidity levels out here. I guess humidity levels aren't really too big of a concern, but if you drive up to the Mesa or something, right? Like I was up there shooting and humidity levels were definitely be a concern up there, right? Fortunately, the night I was out there, like we weren't quite at the level where the, the dew point was like uh, causing a problem with the cameras, but like that can cause a problem too. Can, but yeah. yeah, so like basically once you've got all these factors in place, everything is right, then you can go out and do the shooting. Yeah. And what's your favorite place to shoot? So uh, one of my favorite places to shoot is actually out at the canyon. So I have, it's the, I have not been doing specifically what you might call astrophotography. So uh, what I've been doing is I've been taking shots of the sunset out at the canyon. Mm -hmm. So I go out there usually at least once a week. And so I have a bunch of shots on my website now. And then I've been trying to do some uh, panoramas more recently. So I think one of those of the sunset is up on my website now and hopefully more coming soon. I can't wait to see it. That's yeah. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Tell me what else would you like Montrose to know? Because I know you want to start growing here. Mm -hmm. And I know the, the, the goal is probably on a much bigger scale in mm -hmm. the future. Um, but I really like that you get to share this with our community first. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's anything else that you'd like to tell Montrose. Yeah, so uh, I mean, if you're passionate about like uh, astrophotography or just photography in general. So one thing we haven't mentioned is I, I actually fly drones as well. I'm professionally licensed. 
So I could also help you with any uh, drone shots that you uh, might be interested in taking. And uh, so that's, that's another area of uh, expertise that I, I could share with you. So like, basically I, I try to cover all photography, maybe it's too much, but like I'll have to focus down later on, but like uh, I, I enjoyed really just the whole creative process around just the different types of photography and learning different things. And so yeah, like just reach me at uh, growthgalleries.com. And like I said before, there's many ways to contact me on there and you can also see the gallery of all my work too. And so drone photography, um, mm -hmm. If we talk about that, I, I, I actually don't know much about it other than for real estate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's about all I know. Yeah. And it's photography and video, yes. um, both. So I don't know if you explore video or if you focus on photography only. Um, but what would you say is the, the number one benefit from, a, from drone photography? So the, the, the main benefit of a drone photography is right is you can get a totally different perspective that's not possible without like getting in a helicopter or something, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. like it's a it's a very cheap way to get that those type of shots, comparatively speaking, right, yes. over time. So I think that that's the biggest uh, advantage that I it's see. It's the location. Yeah. It's really obtain these shots mm -hmm. from sure. a place where you mm -hmm. couldn't be Otherwise, that's, that's a good problem. But how would you know where to go, what angle to take? Do you just have to keep trying and see what's best? Or do you look at the light? Um, because I would assume that, I mean, when you start flying these mm -hmm. things, right? There's, it's a vast option. How do you yeah. know how to shoot? And mm -hmm. how do you learn that too? So, so basically, right, like I would say for uh, drone photography, right, like the, the concepts of photography really don't change whether you're on the ground or you're in the air, right? So like a key part of uh, photography is the composition, right? So when you're thinking about a drone photograph, like you would think about what are the key components in my composition, right? Like if I'm down by the, the crystal lake during the day and I'm taking a drone shot of the mountain, right? The mountain obviously is one key thing I need to think about. I also need to think about the water that's below it. That might be another thing, all right? That's right along the road, right? There are a million dollar highway, right? So you've got like all of these different compositional elements, what maybe it's going to be in a few weeks, right? The tree, aspen trees will be yellow, right? So that's another key element of the composition. And so, right, just keeping in mind where those are in your photo and uh, just using the basic techniques that you would use with uh, regular photography. So it is a lot more planning and thinking than we think, because we're so used mm -hmm. to snapping a photo with our mm -hmm. phones, right? Yes. And we might adjust a couple things, but when you talk about composition mm -hmm. and all these aspects, from water mm -hmm. to color to shadow to mm -hmm. sun to it's uh it's pretty complicated well, it, it can be right and so like i actually you bring up an interesting point so like i, I that there could be scenarios where i would be even be interested in teaching people just with their cell phone because i think that the cell phones have advanced so far for like daytime photography and stuff, you can get fantastic results. Once you start getting into sunset stuff, right, things start to break down. But during the day with good lighting, like, you, I, you, I can totally get fantastic take a results. Class <laughs> to know how to use my phone. I know that my, my um, photography thing, like, it's yeah. really fancy. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how to use it. Yeah. I do not know how to use it. And mm -hmm. of course, what I take the most photo of are my kids. And But I know with the, the fall coming up, mm -hmm. I love doing a drive through the fall yeah. colors and take photos and the photos never do it justice. Mm -hmm. And if I, if you had something to do like a color drive and let's go take some photos and learn how mm -hmm. to use your phone, man, I would be on board. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> sure. Well, I'll think about that and we'll see yes. what you come up we'll with. Keep you, we'll, we'll keep you all posted. That could be a really fun, um, a fun day. Honestly, oh, sure. this mm -hmm. area is so beautiful in the fall. It's one of my favorite time of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to know how to use my iPhone to do mm -hmm. that. And I mean, I'm sure Samsung has great photography on there too. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that I struggle with. And I know I just, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lazy. I just don't look into it to know. <laughs> I'm sure I could take a day and learn it, but mm -hmm. for me, I'm hands-on mm -hmm. learning. So if somebody shows me, it's a lot easier. And if I'm with other people, mm -hmm. and it's so much more fun. So think about it and we'll keep you posted for sure. on my page. We'll let you know <laughs> if that happens. We'll put an event. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I learned so much today just mm -hmm. talking about this. This piece of material is fantastic. It's really just, it's phenomenal to see what this can do. Mm -hmm. And it sounds simple, yet so complicated. <laughs>
Um, and these photos are out of this mm -hmm. world. So thank you so much for sharing your passion with us. I so appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, Dolphine. You're welcome.